romantic places in my mind, hoping someday I would find the perfect one and I could share. And then that day you walked inside and no longer could I hide my love. I had to take you there. Mambo VP, what's up everybody? It's your man Harvest Brown. Hello. I'm glad to be here in Nairobi, Kenya for the first time. I'm an R&B artist. I was signed to Uptown and I moved to Motown Records. And uh, my album came out on Motown in 96. So, you know, it's, it's an amazing thing and experience to be here after all of those years to finally make it here to Nairobi. That was the early 90s when that Taste Your Love came out. And uh, it was a bit controversial, but you know, I was just trying to write something different. And, uh, but be very clean with it and very tasteful. I think it was tastefully written, but I think some at that time it just wasn't taken that way, especially in the South where I'm from. I'm from actually North Carolina, where I had the problems. In the, in the Bible Belt area, they called us in the South. Yeah. But up North, eh, it was like, hey, eh, we love it, Hollis, sing it again, you know what I mean? Yeah. So it was just about the region, you know, it wasn't about uh, the whole states. And I'm thankful that, you know, it, it moved on from there and one for the money came and gave a whole new life to me and uh, then things we do for love uh, so I, I'm, I'm very blessed and for, for what you say about today I think you know of course time has changed look look what, look what, uh, what we have today we're walking everyone is walking around with a cell phone today and even the kids are going you know and <laughs> so it's an amazing time we're living in today of course it's going to be a little less scrutiny on uh, you being yourself so I think it's cool and I like it better that I think it's better that you should be uh, having the right to say what you really feel other than, you know, hold back your really feeling. We're human, and if it's so, you know, we know how to put a label on it and say this is for adults and this is not for adults. Yeah. We're not children, you know, we, we must know this. So, yeah, so you can choose what you listen to. You can't act like someone has made something is so disgusting. Yeah, you can find some disgusting stuff if you want to. You can go on the internet and find something disg disgusting. But, you know, music is not that. Music is love. Music is passion. Music is it's a language all over the world. It means, you know, music all over the world. I can go to any country and like the music. To work with him was amazing. I mean, but actually, you know, at that time we had developed systems where you didn't have to even be in the studio together at the time. So we weren't even in the studio at the time together. But we later, you know, I know him. We we got together many times, and yeah, we spoke together many times. And I was just honored to have him, you know, on my record at a time when many people didn't know of him that well. So and we see where his career went to, so it's, uh, it, it lets me know that we did make a good decision to choose Jay-Z for this record. So I'm, I'm proud about that. It's still one of my favorite records. There's a time and place for everything. So there's a time for my music and a place for my music. And, and just like uh, through our religion and our faith and my father being an apostolic minister, I love him for that, you know, just like uh, I go to Sunday school with him when I'm at home. So, you know, it doesn't take from the other thing. He understands that that is uh, my, my work. It's something that it helps me to uh, touch the world, see the world, and experience the world the way I am today with you here today. How could I be here had I not made this music? Twin Towers had fallen down, and I was in New York in Queens. And uh, being there, you know, it was very, very, uh, I'll say a scary event. Very much, really. You, you almost think, oh my God, is the world coming to an end? I, if you're there, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I was there. So I went down south, and then I got a call from my, my friend, Mr. Earl Duggins, and he invited me. Uh, he's with me here today. So uh, he invited me to come to Germany and do a tour through Germany. And after I did that tour, it was no, it was no stopping. I had to come back and tour again because I learned and found out so much things about how close Germany was being in the center of Europe that I was able to get to these other countries very, very quickly to, to Switzerland and to Austria and to Belgium and to the Netherlands. They were all next to one another. So I was able to see a lot and experience a lot by being there and uh, to see most of Germany. Uh, and, and they've been great. It's been a great experience because coming from the States, uh, being of my color, I experienced a lot of things. I experienced a lot of things, bad things with the cops, you know, and it's not no joke. It's real. It's true. It happened to me, you know, and they will be harassing you and, and treat you in an un, 
unhealthy way. I mean, they're supposed to be there for me. So being in Europe, I, I was able to see that they didn't treat me this way. I'm like, wow, I'll get treated better than I get treated at home. I say, so wow, I'm, you know, it's very impressive. And I just had to stay and learn more about, you know, uh, the, the way they do things. And I, I'm, I'm very ashamed to say that I feel happy in other countries a lot of times but just because of my treatment and my harassment by being just my skin color in America. It's like having something and you have a lot of it in your house. It kind of don't mean as much to you as someone down the street who has none of it in their house. Or as, at least, you know, materially wise, you know, they may can see but they don't have it there. So when I go through Europe, they're almost happy to see you because they say you don't really have to come. So for you to come, they show their appreciation that you come in. They show their love for your music. They're in lines. They want you to sign their albums and things that you're like, wow, you know. They have the vinyl and they have, so they show their appreciation. So it's just a great thing to see this in, in America. It seems like, you know, you're in, you're hot. Ah, oh, who's the next? Oh, there's the next one. Oh, put him inside. Get him out of here. He's over it, you know. They don't mean, I don't think they even mean much harm because New York doesn't do that. I still get the same love in New York. But a lot of places, they're just like on to the next and uh, you know that was the old school you know but I love my old school I listen to a lot of Marvin Gaye now and I listen to a lot of old school music that just blows me blows my mind today like wow they did such a great job in music back then they paved the way for me to come here so I'm thankful for the older music singing was something I loved to do and you know, like you might sing in the bathroom, in the shower or something, nobody's listening, so you know, you might do this, right? Um, it was like that for me, because I like good music, and, and it was like a lot of great groups was coming out at the time. It was only in the, like, like the early 90s when I was starting to develop my skills writing and wanting to write. Guy was just out, you know what I mean? You can have a piece of my love. When you heard that, you just had to sing along. You just couldn't just listen to it and be like, turn. You had to sing along. And after you start singing along, it got, it got you. It got you. You know, the way Teddy Riley was producing records and the way everybody was serious. And then Keith Sweat came and hit everybody in the head with them. Man, you just loved it. You just, you had to participate. So my participation was no matter what I was working, I could be a janitor at a, at a school. And I was. And, and uh, when everybody was going, if I'm locking the place up, there was a piano that I would sit there and just mess around and write song. And uh, because, you know, a lot of us don't have those resources, you know, pianos and studios. You just have to believe in yourself if you're young. You have to stand in that mirror and say, I can do it. And you have to go do it. So I'm thankful I had the courage to just even get out there and just show my talent, you know, because a lot of people are very talented. And they suppress it because, you know, they're just not having that faith to believe that you can do it.